The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Pro. We're at the Southwest Ag Conference down in Ridgetown and we're joined by uh, Horst Bonner, OMAFRA soybean specialist. Horst, uh, thanks for taking the time. Well, thank you for the invitation. Hey, now you, uh, you've just finished up one of your presentations, Wide Rose Return. Um, basically, what's old is new again, and uh, a lot of talk about bringing rows, wide rows back. First question is, maybe why? Yeah, it really comes down to a number of factors, and, and equipment is a big one, right? We have big corn planters, obviously, and they're so much more efficient, right? I mean, and then, of course, if you don't need an extra piece of equipment if you could do both corn and beans. So that's the obvious one. The other one is around seed costs. You know, every year it seems that uh, there's a gradual increase to seed costs, and it's our biggest cost now per acre. Um, excluding land, of course. So if you can shave that. And then the third real reason is there are pockets in Ontario and specific fields that get consistent white mold. So those are the three big reasons. So disease and obviously economics. Um, now, we've, we've got to narrow rows basically because of from a yield perspective, and a lot, a lot right. of the research that you show and everybody uses is, you know, you're talking about a, about a seven bushel difference between those wide rows on 30s mm -hmm. and down to a narrower, narrower row, uh, something drilled around 15 or 20. Um, the big question is, you know, can you, can you do it economically? Can you close the yield gap? Right, and so, you know, the Ontario number in terms of a difference would be a little bit less than those Ohio numbers we show. So typically we talk about a four bushel difference between 30s and 15s or seven and a half, so they're about the same. So it's not as, first. the first thing you have to wrap your brain around is that it's really not a big number compared to the overall perspective, you know, if you're talking about a 50, maybe hopefully a 60 bushel crop to give up four bushels is not as big a number as you might think it, when you look in the spring, right? I mean, those big gaps in, in, in the field with all that sunshine being wasted. So um, at the end of the day here, uh, when we look at those producers who really want to use 30 inch rows and how they can minimize that yield gap, the basic strategy is, of course, to close the canopy fast, right? So planning date is, is one. That's a pretty obvious one. Uh, and in our work, what we were doing is some strip tillage and then some fertilizer to get the beans again to grow a little faster. And since we can do it now with a row unit planter, and then a foliar fungicide too, because there is a bit of a green stay green effect even in the absence of disease. So, and we tried a bunch of other foliar feeding products and uh, other management strategies to try and get the canopy closed fast and basically, you know, uh, hopefully even have more yield than a narrow roll with, with nothing on it. Talk a little bit about the Allura research that you did this year, strip till and some of the input yeah. management, and we'll put that slide up on the screen for, right. for viewers right. while, while you're talking. Talk about you know what that told you, especially from a strip till perspective. Right, so we were very happy there with uh, the results in terms of the, the yield gain that we could get by some of these management strategies. And, and right away, if you look at the data set there, simply by strip tilling, so now we're talking 15 inch row unit planted beans versus 30 inch with strip till, we managed to get essentially the whole yield gap back. In other words, they yielded the same as the narrow rows, right? And then when we added the other management strategies, we actually exceeded the narrow rows um, with nothing on them. So from a, uh, you know, from a, a soybean physiology perspective, uh, I was surprised because, you know, Laura is starting to get into some shorter, shorter day beans up there. Now, obviously, part of the reason was this year because uh, we had some really nice yields there, right? 58 bushels to start with. Um, the one other thing, though, that comes up with this discussion of, of wide rows is that there is a bit of a perception that if you grow wide rows, you can get more 
out of inputs. In other words, because you have individual plants, they can bush more, um, you'll get more of a response to some of these inputs than you would in narrow rows. And so far we've not seen that. The narrow rows yield just as well with respect to these additional inputs. So we can get the same kind of a bump in narrow rows, right? Let's talk about a couple other things you mentioned. Variety choice is still very important here. I mean, yeah. and, and you did some work there as well. I mean, like, you get the right variety, and the, you know, um, you're, yeah. you're, there's a yeah. big yield difference. Absolutely. So variety choice, you know, if, you, if you're thinking about growing wide rows, um, besides the obvious management strategies that we just talked about, including early planting, right, and, and trying to get a consistent plant stand is very important. And the other thing uh, I didn't really say there, I think that for those producers who want to go down the road of wide, wider rows, uh, some form of tillage is important because you, th no till is just a, a real stressful environment for the plant. You got to get those those uh, rows clean as a minimum, and for a lot of for a lot of producers, that means straight tillage. To be honest, now with respect to varieties, you know the seed companies do have a pretty good idea of which ones are more suited to to wide rows. The obvious statement would be that you don't want real short beans that don't branch very well, right? Those are not those are not the ones you want. Now in your yield comparison that you showed at the at this presentation, uh, which we have on the screen now, there's a vast difference between the actual yield numbers here. That's right. Yeah, yeah, about 10 bushels roughly speaking, right? So that is uh that is a tremendous gain in in uh soybean yield. Typically, you know, with our inputs when we did the kitchen sink study in Ontario in Ontario, uh it was about 7 bushels. So this was a very responsive site especially to the fungicides and well to all to, to all three things that we did really for whatever reason uh, could be a number of factors right last thing I want to talk about is that uh, you know it's basically maturity and the length of being length, length of day for, for beans um, in your is there a sense <coughs> that you know if you go wider you you can go longer if you go wider I don't know that it really changes the um, overall story in terms of whether you can go with a longer day bean. Um, what it, the maturity issue is still the same. In other words, longer day beans yield more on average, but how do you balance that with a frost in the fall, right, or going into wheat? So in other words, you know, we know that if you plant real long day beans, you will get, on average, more yield. And, and with respect to wide rows, I don't know that it really changes the situation, right? Hey, um, fascinating conversation. Uh, always interesting to see something that's sort of like pushed aside or and then being brought back for different reasons yeah, as, yeah. As, as the industry changed, well, the challenges changed. Well, that's right. And the one thing I should throw in here, um, and I think we've always kind of known this, but for those growers who have a real white mold problem, right, it's kind of one of their number one soybean issues. Hey, listen, there is nothing wrong with going to wide rows. Even, even if you take a bit of a yield hit in a, in a dry year, you will pick up far more than that in white mold control. And, and some of the pioneer numbers that they, they showed from out east, uh, eastern Ontario, was they yielded just as much in their wide rows than narrow rows, right? So uh, certainly for a lot of us, if you grow tall, bushy crops of soybeans, wide rows are, are a viable option. Hey, thank you for your time today. Yeah, thanks for the invitation.